learning class. In my introductory class, I told us that the title of this course is Nigerian History. What does it mean? It means that everything we are going to do or learn in Nigerian history is all about Nigeria. In chapter one, we looked at the meaning, nature and scope of history. In chapter two, we are now going to look at the land and the people of Nigeria. So in this chapter, we shall discuss the features of the country's environment, its impact on the history, the different geographical zones which different groups of people inhabit, and the features of the various ethnic groups or nationalities in different geographical zones. What are the expected outcome, which is objective? By the end of this session, the student will be able to know the features of the country's environment, the population and the people of Nigeria, the impact of geography upon its history, the effects of the Sahara and the Atlantic Ocean in the development of Nigeria, the pre-colonial intergroup relations among the early Nigerian people, and the cultural and tourism potentials of Nigeria. What are we to know about Nigeria? These are some of the few points we have to know about Nigeria. Historically, the name Nigeria was taken from the Niger River running through the country. The name was coined on 8 January 1897 by the British journalist Flora Shaw, who later married Lord Logard, a British colonial administrator. The neighboring Republic of Niger takes its name from the same river, officially known as the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa and the world's seventh most populous country. Nigeria is widely recognized as the giant of Africa. Its greatness is attributed to its huge territory, endowment of natural resources, and energetic population. Nigeria's most diverse future is its people. Hundreds of languages are spoken in the country. The three largest ethnic groups are the Aousa in the north, Yoruba in the west, and the Igbo in the east. The national capital is Abuja, the federal capital territory, which was created by decree 1976. Lagos, the former capital, retains its standing as the country's leading commercial and industrial city. Modern Nigeria dates from 1914, when British protectorates of Northern and Southern Nigeria were joined. The country became independent on October 1st, 1960, and in 1963 adopted a Republican constitution, but elected to stay a member of the Commonwealth. Nigeria is a federal republic comprising 36 states and the federal capital territory, where the capital, Abuja, is located. The states are further subdivided into 774 local government areas. Again, the states are aggregated into six geopolitical zones. Northwest, Northeast, North Central, Southwest, Southeast, and South South. Having seen some facts about Nigeria, we are now going to look at the region, the vegetation, and the population of Nigeria. The country is located in the West African subcontinent. It covers an area of 923,769 square kilometers, with a population estimated, according to the United Nations, 2021 projection to be 213,401,323 people. Nigeria lies between latitude 4 degrees and 14 degrees north, entirely within the tropical zone, and occupies a position where the western part of African continent meets Equatorial Africa. 
The country's land area stretch, stretches from the Gulf of Guinea on the south to the Sahara Desert in the north. It is bounded in the west by Republic of Guinea, in the north by Republic of Niger, in the east by the Republic of Cameroon, and in the south by the Gulf of Guinea or Atlantic Ocean. A major geographical feature of the country is its two major rivers, namely the River Niger and the Benue Rivers. The Niger flows into Nigeria through northwest and meets and merges with the Benue at the center of the country called Lokoja and then flows southward. The Benue River itself enters the country from the northeastern Aziz and together with the Niger and its many tributaries empty into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Having looked at the region, the vegetation, and the population of Nigeria, our next subtopic will be the effects of geography on the history and development of Nigeria. The effects of geography on the history of Nigeria. The history of any place is incomplete without a discussion on how certain geographical features like the highlands, plains, and water bodies, climate, and vegetation influence certain historical activities in these areas. In the case of Nigeria, it lies between two large external physical features which have greatly influenced her history for centuries. These physical features are the Sahara Desert in the north and the Atlantic Ocean in the south. We will separate our discussions on these two physical bodies that lie externally outside Nigeria but has great influence in the development of Nigeria. One is the Sahara Desert in the north and the Atlantic Ocean in the south. We look at the effect of the Sahara Desert in the evolution of Nigeria. There was a trade relationship between the people of the North, North Africa, and West Africa, and this trade took place across the Sahara Desert. There were migrations of people. This were the effect. We are looking at the effect of the Sahara Desert. One of the number one effects is that there was trade relationship between the people of Western Sahara and the people of North Africa. Number three, number two is that there were migrations of people between the North and the South, that is South Sudan across the Sahara. Number three, Islamic religion and Arabic education entered Nigerian area through the Sahara Desert. The fourth one is marriage and cultural borrowings, which occurred via the Sahara route. Now, before we go to the next one, which is the effect of uh, Atlantic Ocean to the development of Nigeria, let us look at the four effects of the Sahara in the development or evolution of Nigeria. We looked at the trade relationship we looked at migration of the people from the north to the south. We also looked at the influence and effects of Islamic religion and Arabic education. Finally, we also discovered that marriage and cultural borrowing took place across the Sahara Desert. We are now going to look at the effects of the Atlantic Ocean in the development of Nigerian area. The number one effect that Atlantic Ocean had in the development of Nigeria is, number one, it was a channel through which the Portuguese explorers and later the Portuguese traders first came into contact with Nigerian people. Secondly, the early Portuguese Christian missionaries entered Bini and Wari through the Gulf of Guinea. Number three, it was a channel through which Western education also entered Nigeria. The fourth effect of that Atlantic Ocean to the development of Nigerian area is that it served as the entry point of the colonial administrators who came 
and the effect of the colonial administrators coming to Nigeria is number one, our sovereignty got lost. The empires that existed in Nigerian area, like Bono Kanu Empire, the Oyo Empire, the Bini Empire, all of them all collapsed with the coming of the colonial British colonial administra administrators in Nigeria. Having said the effect of the Atlantic Ocean in the history, historical development of Nigeria, we are now going to look at intergroup relations among LA Nigerians. Intergroup relations. Remember that this area called Nigeria was not known as Nigeria. Nigeria only came into existence in 1914. But that does not mean that we did not have cultural and intergroup relations amongst ourselves. And that is what we are now going to look at now. Nigeria, as we know it today, that is one country under one leadership, did not exist about some hundred years ago. Before that time, what is called Nigeria were various independent nation states, kingdoms, and empires that owed no allegiance to any other power but themselves. They later lost this much savage sovereignty through various actions of omission or and commission on the part of the British government, as well as the activities of overzealous British officials and ambitious British merchants and trading companies. All these activities, which officially started with the appointment of a British council in 1849 for the Bight of Benin and Biafra, now known as Bight of Boni, and the annexation of Lagos, among many others, culminated in the amalgamation in 1914 of the protectorate of northern and southern Nigerian of southern Nigeria into a country called Nigeria. Our task now is to look at the meaning of intergroup. After that, we now look at the different uh, corporations that existed uh, among the different communities in Nigeria. The question now is, what is intergroup relations? And we say that intergroup relation is a rela uh, intergroup relations refers to both individual interactions involving members from different groups and the collective behavior of groups in interaction with other groups at either the intra or interorganizational level. Group relations imply cooperation between different states. This could take the form of trade, diplomatic ties, management of trade routes, boundaries, and water resources, and wars, among others. Now, the next thing we are going to consider on intergroup relations are the factors that promoted intergroup relations among LA Nigerians. What are the factors that promoted intergroup relations? Number one is relations promoted by trade. Trade was perhaps the most important factor which linked many groups together. The next thing that promoted intergroup relations is trade routes, markets, and traders. Trade routes, markets, and traders contributed to interactions among different groups, thus promoting intergroup relations. The third point is relations promoted by religious, social, and cultural institutions. The various groups were also integrated by religious, political, and social institutions. In every group or in contiguous states, there were many institutions which brought the people closer to one another. When you are looking at some of these examples, most of you might have known some cultural institutions like Ekbe group or the Ogboni. These are cultural groups that brought so many in the 
eastern and south south state of Akwaibom, Cross River, Abia, and Eboy. The Ekwe Society deepens intergroup relations because members of different communities we are members of Ekwe Group. In the West, you had societies like the Ogboni Society, which had members even outside Nigeria. Now, we also had relations that were promoted by migrations. Migration was equally important. Nigerians history is full of examples of migrations from one area to another for either political, economic, or security reasons. Relations promoted by diplomacy. In order to maintain the links existing among states and to drive the benefit of peaceful coexistence, many Nigerian states deliberately maintain diplomatic ties with one another and we are also conversant with the intricate art of diplomacy. We, when we are looking at examples of relations promoted by diplomacy, we'll be looking at relationships that existed between empires like Bini Empire, or your Empire, Kenumbenu Empire, and the rest of them, because these Nigerian uh, empires maintained diplomatic relations among themselves. And lastly, we see relations promoted by war. War was an integral part of the state relations with other states and can thus be rightly characterized as an evidence of intergroup relations. War has also, also even been described as diplomacy by another means. The causes of wars were many, but the major one was the ambition of imperial states to extend their political control over other societies. Also, many states went to war in order for each ruling class to obtain wealth by capturing slaves, extending their farmland, exerting tributes from conquered territories, having access to trade and controlling the trade route. With this, we shall end our discussions on the land and people of Nigeria. In our next class, which is chapter 10, we shall be looking at the centers of ancient civilization in Nigeria. Thank you so much.